Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another Dr. Cassette video. Today I'll be presenting the ORM model CSPA1 stereo hi fi amplifier system. As you can see, I have it taken apart so that we can take a look inside. And uh, as you can see, well, there is nothing special inside of there. Um, but still, there are some things that um, I want to talk with you about. First thing is the power cord. So you can see they have used a power cord with security ground, which is kind of incredible. I've never seen an appliance like this which had a security ground hooked up to it. So that's really nice. Another nice thing and another thing that uh, you don't see very often is it actually has a fuse sitting right there. Now, the value of the fuse is pretty much a fantasy value um, because according to the fuse that's in there, um, the amplifier is allowed to take up a 110 watts before the fuse um, shuts it off. And, well, I would say that's about three times as much as this thing should um, take up as a maximum. So it's... Well, I'm probably going to replace the fuse with a smaller type fuse. Um, however, you can see the transformer is, well, it's not very big. One special thing is that there are actually all the voltages marked on there. That's nice. Um, transformer puts out 15 volts. And uh, that's, that's already the maximum of what the chip can do. The chip has a maximum rating of 18 volts and if you take the 15 volts AC and put them through the rectifier and filter capacitor you'll get about 18 volts, so that's all fine. The amplifier chip is a TDA2004 which is rated at uh, 2 times 10 watt maximum. Um, but that is with two ohm speakers, which, uh, well, I don't think the rest of the amplifier was designed for. Um, with the four ohm speakers that I have hooked up at the moment, we are getting about six watts per channel, which is okay, I would say. You see the inputs and outputs are right there. We have a input selector right there. It's one of those switches that transfers the turning motion into a back and forth motion as you can see by that little pin there. I switch it. The potentiometers for the tone control, we have bass and treble regulators, are pretty big for such a cheap amplifier. I've actually seen amplifiers that had even smaller potentiometers, smaller than these two, as the volume control. And I mean, that is cheap. The volume control on this amplifier isn't, isn't too cheap. So you can hear, it has these um, kind of steps to go with the volume. However, um, the gear that, um, that does those steps uh, is made of cheap material because in the lower volume range, which was probably used the most, you might be able to hear it's not clicking, and that is because that gear is just worn out in that sector. Um, the potentiometer itself is, um, is good. I have read in the internet that there were models um, that had a volume control that was set up in a way that um, if you turn the amplifier up just a little bit, it was already blastingly loud. But then, if you turn it up further, it wouldn't increase the volume anymore at all. Uh, so that's one of those fake volume controls that makes you think that the amplifier goes a lot louder than it actually does. That's not the case with this volume control. It's nice and, um, well, no complaints with that. We have a function that's called 3D, which is probably supposed to give you some sort of a, 
um, of a surround sound. Well, that is absolute garbage. It kind of works like a loudness. It has, it's hooked up to the volume control and there is a capacitor and resistor network that's working. But it isn't a loudness and uh, quite honestly it would have been better if they would have just put in a loudness. Because <laughs> uh, the 3D if you activate it, it just sounds horrible. We have a headphone output and then of course the power switch. And also a little square LED that lights up. So, before we uh, continue to talk about this, um, I'm going to play some music. I have it hooked up to my Onkyo cassette deck right here. Turn that on. Put in this cassette and um, I think there are no copyright problems with that song. So, here we go. Let's play some music. I'm going to turn up the volume control a little bit. And here we go. As you can hear, the 3D makes everything sound kind of tinny. So, you better leave that turned off. <laughs> now, um, I searched about this thing in the internet and I found out that this exact amplifier is also sold by um, not only by ORM but also by a brand called Dyna... Dyna... no... Uh, Dynavox. Yeah, it was kind of... it's Dynavox. Then there is a brand called Swinx and um, that's about all the brands I could find but well there are more brands I'm really sure. Um, however, this exact amplifier is also like a deluxe version, which um, is um, it has a balance control instead of a headphone output. Balance control just takes the, the place of the headphone output, and it has a bigger transformer built in. And then there is like the ultimate deluxe version, which has again balance control instead of headphone output. Has a toroidal power uh, transformer, one of the circular things. Has bigger chips and well, one chip for each channel. And <laughs> which uh, well, it has wooden side panels. Well, of course not real wood. <laughs> no, it's plastic. So, um, those are the relatives of this amplifier. I have no idea who actually make, makes this and who then prints the various brand names onto there. Okay, I want to shut that quickly off because the next song does have copyright problems. So, that's pretty much the end of our little presentation. Um, you could actually do some modifications inside this amplifier. You could, of course, put in a bigger heatsink, but, well, according to what I found out, this is actually enough. It's a setup where the, the chip is connected to the metal bottom part of the housing, and that's used as a heatsink. Uh, you could improve the amplifier by putting in a bigger filter capacitor, that's for sure. But it currently has a 2200 microfarad capacitor in there, that's about enough I would say. You could also increase the size of the output capacitors to get a better bass response. Also these currently are 2200 microfarad types, that's uh, all according to the typical application circuit from the data sheet. Um, however, um, you should just slightly increase those capacitors. I think 3300 microfarad is the absolute maximum because if you put in two big capacitors they'll blow up the output transistors of the chip um, whenever they charge themselves up. 
Um, aside of that, there aren't much, or there aren't many things you could modify. I mean, well, you could put in all better cables and that sort of stuff, but I don't think that's appropriate for this little amplifier. So all in all, it really is a nice amplifier. I really like it because, well, even though it's it was made in China, the designers of this amplifier, well, they had to produce a very, very cheap amplifier, but still, they tried to make it as good as possible. And I always like that. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and see you again soon! That was the wrong button. I actually wanted to give you a little fade out thing. So here we go with the fade out.